In view of the fact that the elucidation of this question which interested him turned out to be complicated, and in the surrounding conditions of the places of habitation there impracticable, he decided to come to me and, with my help, clear them up by experiment. And that was why he had brought with him all the necessary materials for these elucidatory experiments. The next day, I put at his disposal one of the sections of the underground domain and several what are called Salkarmorskian goats, and everything else required for his elucidatory experiments. Among other preparations, he, with the help of the Bunsen elements, first put into operation the action of the Rowentgen apparatus. And already three days after his arrival, that began which was the cause of the arising of permanent electric lighting in our caves. And it began in the following way. As we were making certain experiments by means of my vibrometers and calculating the vibrations of the electric current which produces X-rays in the Rowingen apparatus, we noticed that the number of vibrations of the electric current obtained by means of these Bunsen elements all the time either increased or diminished. And because the number of vibrations in a certain length of time were most important for our elucidations during the flowing of the electric current, it then became clear to us that that kind of electric current was absolutely useless for the elucidations we required. This constatation of ours very much discouraged and depressed my young friend. He immediately ceased the experiments he had begun and began to think. The following two days he thought unceasingly, even during meals. At the end of the third day, as we were going together to the section where we usually had our repasts, and were crossing the little bridge in the main section of our caves built over an underground stream, he suddenly stopped, and striking his forehead, cried out excitedly, Eureka! The outcome of that exclamation then was that on the next day, with the help of several hired Tajiks, there were removed from various ancient and deserted mines lying nearby lumps of three kinds of ore, as large as could be removed, and these were placed in a certain order in the bed of our underground stream. Then, after laying that ore in the bed of the stream, he very simply connected from the stream two what are called terminals to the slightly charged accumulators which he himself had brought. And owing to this, the electric current of the famous what is called amperage began to flow into these accumulators. And when after 24 hours we passed the electric current thus obtained into the said accumulators through our vibrometers, then it turned out that although its amperage was not sufficient, yet the number of vibrations obtained from that electric current remained unchanged and absolutely uniform during all the time of its flow through my vibrometers. To increase the force of the electric current obtained in this peculiar way, he made condensers of various materials, namely from goatskins, from a certain kind of clay, crushed zinc ore and pine resin, and in this way there was obtained the electric current required for amperage and voltage for the Rowingen apparatus he had brought. By means of this peculiar source of electric current, we ultimately clearly proved to ourselves the following. Although by the employment of this contemporary device for the treatment of the said terrible disease in the whole body of man, the place of the gravitational center becomes atrophied, yet it greatly facilitates the, so to say, metastasis in other glands, and helps the sowing and successful flourishing of it in these new places. And so, friend of my friend, when my young friend had become satisfied after this elucidation, he ceased to be interested in the question in which he had been absorbed, and when he returned home to Europe, he left for our use that source which he had created 
and which required neither attention nor any outside material. And thereafter we gradually installed electric lamps where we needed them in our caves. Although that peculiar source of ours could not generate sufficient energy for all the lamps we had in our caves, yet by making switches everywhere and using the energy only when necessary, it was not wasted at other times, but was gradually stored in accumulators, sometimes even in such a quantity that there was a surplus for various domestic purposes. At this place of Beelzebub's tale, all the passengers of the trans-system ship Karnak experienced something like a sweet, sour taste in the region of the upper part of their mouths. This signified that the ship Karnak was now approaching some planet, namely a place of unforeseen stopping. And this planet was the planet Descaldino, whereupon Beelzebub ceased his narration and with Ahun and Hussein all three went to their Keshas to get ready for the descent to the planet Descaldino. Note, if anyone is very interested in the ideas presented in this chapter, I advise him to read without fail my proposed book entitled The Opiumists, if of course for the writing of this book there will be sufficient French Armagnac and Kaiserian Basturma the author.